Spirit and fire. You are here today. All consuming fire. Consume everything that's not of you. I want more of you and less of me. Fill me. Instruct me. Teach me. I'm teachable. I'm a lifelong learner. And I really don't know very much. So I'm going to remain teachable all the days of my life so that I can learn every day when I wake up from you, the only know-it-all. Now give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mighty Holy Spirit. There are people that are locked into a series that they heard on a subject 20, 30, 40 years ago, and they're so be far behind because everything they say refers back to some series or something they were in. And I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost is speaking every day. Yes, he, he woke me up at four this morning and I started talking to him. I started hanging out with him. And I want to tell you, the Fogels said, when they got here, the Holy Ghost and fire was all, they drive from Magnolia, Texas. Holy Ghost and fire was all in their vehicle. They were drunk in the Holy Ghost when they walked in here. Glory to God. And what we need to do is not, well, what they're going to do for me. Are they going to get me in the presence of God? No, you need to come here full of the Holy Ghost. Say, I'm coming full of the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm coming here to be a blessing, not to get blessed. Amen. Lift your hands and give them a shout of praise. In the early church, they came because they had something. A psalm, a hymn, a prop. They had something. There was this song in the spirit. Amen. Because she had something. Karen had something. Glory to God. Amen. You have something when you hang out with him. Say, I'm going to keep hanging out with you, Holy Spirit. Everybody say, we're in a powerful series. Everybody say, passion, passion. Purity, purity, and power, part 10. Say it again. Passion, passion. Purity, purity, and power, part 10. Say it one more time. Passion, passion. Purity, purity, and power, Point, part 10. That means there's been nine parts before this. Amen. And if you, you, if you hadn't asked me to be your friend on Facebook, please do it so that you get the other parts. Amen. They're on there. Plus, we're recording them on CD. You can take home a CD of the message if you would like. We've got a high-speed duplicator as well. Glory to God. Well, I believe today we're actually going to get into power. Amen. Amen. After nine, we're in the 10th session. I just feel like the Lord's going to allow us to get into, get into, say what I'm, what I'm passionate about. I'll pursue. So Lord, I want to be passionate about you. I want to be more passionate about you than any other person, period. Amen. How do you know what you're passionate about? It'll take up most of your time. What you're most passionate about is going to consume your time. So you'll say, Brother Darrell, pray for this, pray for me, and I'll be glad to pray with you. But one thing I can't do is change your priorities. How do you know what my priorities are? When your eyes open every morning, what you start doing, what you say, what you start listening to. If you start listening to the news first, then that means the news is your God. Because the Bible says you shall have no other gods before me. Whoever it is that you pursue, whatever it is you listen to the most, that's who's your God. You say, well, I don't, I don't like that. Well, then change. Amen. Amen. If the cat's fur is being rubbed the wrong way, just let the cat turn around. Amen. 
You know, that's what repent is. It just means do 180. That's all. You don't have to cry for three hours down here and all this. You just do 180. Say, say repent means change. And the changing can start today. Glory to God. When you start living this way, you won't go back. A person that starts living this way, I'll never have to be concerned. Well, did they backslide? No, you don't backslide when you pursue God every morning when your eyes open. Amen. It's a daily choice. A daily choice. All right. Power. This is my dunamis Bible. And, and this Bible is falling apart. But the reason why I call this Bible, look at it, it's, it's raggedy. It, 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 it doesn't look good in the natural. But there's gold in this Bible. Because the Lord led me <coughs> to mark every single verse in the, old, in the entire New Testament where dunamis power is used. Every, you mean every verse? Yes, every single verse is marked. And it's labeled dunamis. I got, I've got, I got stickers that I manually, that a lot of them are worn off. I manually put a permanent marker and label them dunamis. It's the yellow tabs. <clears throat> All of my yellow tabs is dunamis. <clears throat> and so there's more than one Greek word, <clears throat> excuse me, for power. There's the Greek word kratos. It's spelled K-R-A-T-O-S. But that's better translated strength. Everybody say strength. strength. This word, everybody say this word, dunamis, simply means miracle working power. Amen. Everybody say miracle working power. Miracle working power. Now, we're going to, we're going to, I have to start in Mark chapter 5, starting with verse 21. Actually, actually we're going to start with 19, all right? But hold your place there, because then we need to go to the, uh, some, some scriptures about this dunamis, this miracle working power. So instead of, instead of saying power in these verses, I'm going to say miracle working power because that's the Greek, okay? Everybody say miracle working power. Miracle working power. Now, turn to Acts chapter 1. Turn to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts chapter 1. And verse 8. And the reason why you're hearing my pages turn today, because I don't have a digital version of my Dunamis Bible. It took a lot of time to get all this mark in my Dunamis Bible, uh, of my physical Bible. So we're going to be turning the pages. So Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, Remember, I'm going to say miracle working power. But I say miracle, miracle. Working, power. working power. All right. Not kratos, strength. I'm going, to, I'm going to be reading what dunamis means. means. So Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, But ye shall receive. So let's make it personal. Let's say, but I shall receive. But I shall miracle receive. Working power. Miracle working power. Not before. Not before. But when. The Holy, Spirit the Holy Spirit has come upon me. Come upon and, I shall be a and I shall be a witness to you, Lord, to you, Lord. In, 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 my in my Jerusalem. Now, their Jerusalem was Jerusalem. What is your Jerusalem? It's where you live. Everybody say, where I live, where I live. is my Jerusalem. my Jerusalem. It's your starting point. And remember our, our, our motto, God's given us a motto here. When you, your ministry starts when you leave this, when you exit this building. And, and what is your ministry? Everybody say, each one, each one. Reach, one. reach one. 
And each one, and each one win, one. win one. one. That's your assignment when you leave here. Amen. Everybody here can reach one person. There's somebody that God has put in your life to reach. And I guarantee you there's somebody that God has put in your life that's on their way to hell. You say, well, I don't know how to lead them to Christ. Then just get them here. Just say, all I got to do is get them here. You say, what do I do to tell them? Just say, there's some place I want you to come with me, and I, I'm only asking you to come one time. Amen. You mean that, that easy? Yeah. Just say, I'm just asking you to come with me one time, and I'll never bother you again. Amen. What a deal. Amen. Say, it'll be worth coming just for me not to keep asking. Amen. Just come one time. Yeah. Sunday mornings. Everybody say Sunday mornings. Church on Fire, 218 South Magnolia Street, Hearn, Texas, 77859, zip, 10.30 a.m., Sunday morning. Just come one time, and I'll never bother you again. But I guarantee you, when they come, the Holy Spirit is going to deal with them to come to Jesus. What a deal. Lift your hand. Everybody Amen. say, each Amen. one, each reach one. one. Each one, each win, one. win one. Amen. All right. So, all right. Say, I shall receive miracle work and power when the Holy Spirit has come upon me. And I shall be a witness to you. In my, in my Jerusalem, my home, and in all Judea, now Judea it was a little bit further out than Jerusalem, say my surrounding area, and then and my Samaria, the outcast. The Samaritans were the outcast. The, the Jews were forbidden to go there, but the Holy Spirit will enable you to go to racially mixed people. Who were the Samaritans? Everybody say racially mixed people. People that it's, say people that it's hard to find out what their DNA is. Because their bloodline is so mixed up. That's the Samaritans. Everybody here knows somebody that is an outcast because a white person married a black person or a brown person married a red person or a yellow person married a black person or a yellow person married a white person and on and on and on and on. Everybody here knows somebody in that category. Therefore, you are commanded to reach that person. Amen. I said you're command. Well, I don't 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 tell me anything. You are commanded to reach them. The disciples, the disciples, they had a problem because Jesus was walking one day ministering to the Jews, and suddenly the Holy Spirit led him to go to Samaria, the outcast. Who are the Samaritans? They were the Jews that married other nations. They were the half-breeds, and they were ostracized. They were cast out of the main race. And so where did the Holy Ghost lead Jesus to? To the outcast. So you'll never have an excuse again after today. Well, should, am I supposed to reach that person that's racially mixed up? Yes. You are commanded to reach them. Everybody say, when I leave here, reach one. When I leave here, win one. So Jesus went to Samaria, and who did he go to? He went to a woman, a prostitute. Well, am I supposed to 
keep passing that prostitute by every day? No. Oh, I hear the Holy Ghost all of them again. I'm going to have to get this message myself. You'll notice I don't have any notes. Matter of fact, the, the Holy Ghost hadn't let me minister from notes for several Sundays. I just come, I, I hang out with him. He woke me up at four this morning. I've been praying in tongues, travailing in the spirit. And, 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 and when I, I don't know, many times I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth until I stand behind this pulpit. He won't tell me ahead of time. Why? Because he wants me to trust him. And so he went, where did Jesus go? It got the disciples nervous because they saw him talking to a prostitute, getting water out of well. Oh, Jesus, your reputation is at stake. When they find out that you stopped to go one-on-one -on -one with a prostitute, Why was he going on one-on-one -on -one with the prostitute? Because she was on her way to hell and God the Holy Ghost sent Jesus to that prostitute to rescue her. Mm -hmm. And so he has a conversation with this woman. Oh, Holy Ghost, I love you. All of one, all of one, all of one. And we're going to follow you. He has a conversation with this woman. at the well at Sychar, Samaria. Everybody say Sychar. Sychar is the city. Samaria is the region. Samaria. God sent him to the half-breeds. To the half-breeds. There are people, they don't know who their daddy is. They don't know who their mother is. And they need Jesus. I said they need Jesus. So don't you be all so high and mighty and I'm not going to go stoop myself down to go minister to that prostitute or that pimp or that person that's been giving me problems most of my life and God's leading me to that person. And I've got a problem forgiving that person. Well, if you've got a problem forgiving them, forget about being in heaven. You won't be there. Because the word of God says, when you stand praying in Mark eleven twenty six 26, for 25 and 26, forgive if you have anything against anybody. For if you don't forgive, your father in heaven will not forgive you. Well, I came to Christ 10 years ago. Yeah, really? There ain't going to be anybody in heaven that has grudges. You better check up to see if you're really saved, if you're carrying a grudge. You better forgive them, you better drop it, and you better let it go. Everybody say, I've got to leave it. I've got to drop it like a hot potato. I gotta let it go. Yeah, but you don't know who's right. That ain't in there. Forgive it, but but but, but no, there ain't no there, those butts aren't in there. Hey Amen. There's some people listening to me in person today and by Facebook Live. It is stopping your walk with God because you are holding a grudge against somebody that did some things wrong. And you are getting all round and angry about it. And so your job, what if God sends you to reach him from hell? You're commanded to go to the half-breeds. Say, I'm commanded to go to the half-breeds. So he has a conversation with the prostitute. And he says, uh, Uh, I'm thirsty. Give me. Would you give me a drink? 
Now, why God didn't send Jesus to the uppity ups and those that had the best looking and the best functioning well, I guarantee you their well wasn't even the best well because they were the outcasts. They didn't have the latest technology. But Jesus died for them too. Did you know that Rahab was a harlot? And who did God send the, the, the spies before they spied out the land, before they invaded Jericho? Where did God send them? He didn't send them to anybody but a harlot. And do you know that that harlot came to God and they told, they told Rahab, when we come and invade Jericho, we're going to take this city. You put a scarlet thread outside of your house, which represented the blood of Jesus, even though Jesus had not come yet. That was a type of Jesus. And your whole family will be spared because you helped God's people. And God put a harlot into Jesus' lineage. You read it. You read Jesus' lineage in Matthew, and then go read it in Luke, and you'll find that Rahab was put in Jesus' lineage because, because God redeems prostitutes. Everybody say, God redeems prostitutes. Now, God's not sending you to a prostitute to go a whoring. Now, yeah, we already know, this is a fact, that the majority of preachers in the United States, the majority of them, have a secret porn habit. Preachers. And the huge majority of so-called Christians, why do you say so-called? Because... That ain't, that ain't, that's not Christian in the Bible. That ain't, I don't know what, you're, what they're saying. The huge majority of men that say they're Christians have a porn habit. So if you, have a, if you can't go reach that prostitute without going to whoring, then you stay away from him, he or her. But you make you get free. You need to attend this six week course coming up and get free of demons. All right, I, the Lord had me to put that in there because there will be some people that have got some of them, a lot of them, pastors. So yeah, you ain't no pastor. You got to get your message in. So you can go get on the internet and get on your phone and start looking at all the naked ladies. Repent. Come clean and get right with the Lord. And he'll send the times of repression to you. Amen. All right. The Lord had me to make sure I emphasize that now. Jesus is talking to the prostitute. Give me some water. And then he talks, says to her, uh, if you knew who was asking, you'd ask me for water that you'll never thirst again. Yeah. Oh, the, this prostitute. How, how, how did Jesus know she was a prostitute? The Holy Spirit. There were only human was there was only one human around there, that woman. And so she says, Give me that water. That I don't thirst again. He says, uh, go get your husband. Now listen to me very closely. We got a lot, we got a lot of people today that uh, that attend churches and they, they, they present themselves as married couples. But only God knows if you're married, for sure. And you know. Because he told her, go get your husband. 
She says, I don't have one. Jesus said, I'm going to paraphrase. You told me the truth. You didn't lie. Because you've had five husbands. Everybody say five husbands. Five husbands. And the one you're with now is not your husband. <laughs> and so living with somebody doesn't make them your husband or your wife. There's a covenant of marriage. I love my ring. It's a symbol of almost 29 years with this beautiful lady back there named Cynthia Lucretia, now McManus. She used to be Adams. Yes, she came out of the Adams family. <laughs> She even told me there was somebody they called Cousin It somewhere in that lineage. I don't know. I don't know all that, but I just know this. The Lord put us together, and we are married, and that ring is a symbol of that covenant, a never-ending circle of God's love and love to each other. Not We don't scream at each other. We don't belittle each other. We don't cuss. We don't slam doors at our house. We don't sleep in separate rooms. Oh, hallelujah. Now, and when we dated, we never had intercourse before marriage. Boy, it's so quiet when I said that. <laughs> what if I did? Then ask God to forgive you. You don't have to tell me. It's between you and the Lord, but don't do it. Come on. The quickest way to get demons is to have sexual intercourse outside of marriage. Because whoever it is that you went a whoring after, they had demons. And you may have not have had them before, but the moment you had intercourse with that person, every demon that that person has is immediately inside of you. And then you've got to get delivered. There's people that don't, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, Brother Darrell. Well, you know it now. Stop. And if you need to get married, I do it. What do you, what's your fee? Zero. We take love offerings. Because I'd rather, you know, Paul said it's better to marry than to burn with lust. All right, let's move on. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, God loves me so much, God loves me so much. that he speaks the truth through he Brother Darrell. And Brother Darrell's bold enough yes. to tell me the truth because he loves me. And I do love you. Now, let's move right along. So he said, she, she said, I don't have one. And Jesus said, you're right. Now, how did he know that? Through the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, whereby the Holy Ghost will show something to somebody that happened in the past. Everybody say, that happened in the past? In the past. Or is going on right now? So what did the Holy Ghost show Jesus? He showed him both things. He showed him that she had had five husbands. That's the past. Showed him that he's, she's living with a man right now. There was no man at the well. Holy Ghost showed him. Who did the Holy Ghost lead Jesus to? The prostitute. Yeah. And he said, the woman, the one you're living with right now is not your husband. 
Now, guess what? That woman got saved. She was no longer a prostitute. She went to the city of Sychar and she told the men. Why did she tell the men? Because she had been a whoring after most of the men in that city. She'd been to bed with most of the men. And she said, come see a man that told me everything I did. And guess what? They all came by that well. And a revival meeting started at that well. And the whole city came to Jesus. Give, lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Say, my, you didn't forget about Acts 1 8, did you? No. Say, after my Jerusalem, I'm supposed to go to my Judea, my surrounding area, and then I'm supposed to go to the Samaria, the prostitutes, the mixed up marriages, those that never did get married. Those that don't know who their daddy or their mother is. And, and, and then what, what's the last part of Acts 1-8? To the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. Everybody say to the ends of the earth. The ends of the earth. Amen. So after that, God may send you even to another state to reach somebody, to another country to reach somebody. Say, I will remain open to the Holy Spirit. Now, you'll say, okay, we're commanded to receive the power. What happens when I receive it? Turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Now, that group that he told to go tarry till they receive power, he told over 500 of them. Only 120 made it. Only 120 obeyed. You know, they're, they, it's about the same today, about the same percentage of those who actually get filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, Acts, what happens? Well, look at Acts 2 4. Look at it. Look at it closely, like you never read it before. I'm going to do it very slow. And they were all. Notice somebody said, well, I don't guess that I'm supposed to get the Holy Ghost. Lie from the devil. Everybody say a lie from the devil. Lie. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Say they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began. Now just stop right there. They all got filled with the Holy Ghost. And when they got filled, they began to do something. So how do I know I'm filled with the Holy Spirit? Real easy. You're going to begin to do the same thing that they did. What did they begin to do? They began to speak. Let's just stop. The Lord says, slow this way down. Because we got some people that are making it too difficult to receive the Holy Spirit. Let's slow way down. And began to speak. Everybody say they began to speak. They began to speak. Guess what? I, I've been in the ministry now over 44 years. I'll turn 60, at least my body will, August 30th. And, and, and so I came to Christ when I was eight. So that means my, the real Daryl got born again. The real Daryl is... Uh, will soon be 52 years old. But my body will be 60. Because my body was 8 when I got born again. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, you'll say, well, what's the most important? Everybody that's, that's born again, you have two birthdays. And the most important one is the spiritual one. It's when you came to Christ. Amen. And, and so, uh, I've been ministering for a long time in all different countries and I have 
led, uh, I, I, it's countless. I have no idea. There's so many people that God has used me to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And guess what? I have never seen one of them get filled with their mouth closed. Mm. Open your mouth wide. God says, now fill it. Never seen a one get filled with their mouth closed. And, and, and then I give instruction. I, I tell people, so let's just have a little instruction. Let's just do this together. You know, on Facebook Live, let's just do it together. Everybody just, everybody just put your right hand on your belly. All right, let, let's just say this. You don't, don't turn there now. Just, I want you to focus on what, what I'm saying. The Holy Ghost is having me slow this way down. Say, say this with me. Jesus said, Jesus said in John chapter 7, uh, that out of my belly would flow rivers of living water. But Jesus was speaking about the Holy Spirit. That they that believe on him should receive. So I tell people to put their hand there so that when I give further instruction, the language, look, look at me very closely. We'll make sure everybody can see my hand on my belly. The words or the syllables are not going to come from your head. That's why I tell people, now keep your right hand on your belly. This may help you get somebody else filled. Keep your right hand on your belly. Take your left hand and put it on your head right now. This is what I tell people. Say, you old head, you old head. have been in the way long enough. Get out of the way. When the command is spoken. Or when hands are laid on me. I will not say any word. That my head has learned. I will not say hallelujah. I will not say thank you Jesus. I will not say praise the Lord. I will not say anything that I've learned in English, Spanish, Haitian, German, or whatever language that I've learned. All right, now take your, take your left hand off of your head. Keep your right hand on your belly. Say this with me. Just say, say this with me. Say, when the command is spoken, when hands are laid on me, I will say something that comes out of my belly. It's going to sound crazy to my head. That's a good sign. I'm going to open my mouth. In faith, in faith and begin to move my lips and my tongue in faith, in faith. and speak out what comes out, speak out. whatever comes out of the spout I will speak out I will speak out of the Holy Ghost spout amen, amen. and I'll just keep speaking it. and keep speaking it and keep speaking it. Because in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. It says. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began. They didn't stop. They just began. Say it wasn't a one time experience. They began to speak. With other tongues. As the Spirit gave the utterance. Now lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Right now. Hallelujah. Right now. Say right now. 
Glory to God. Now, we're going to start just for a little bit, and then I see the runway. We're going to stop, and we'll pick up next time. I believe some people got a hold of that today. You haven't been able to speak in tongues, but now, do you see? Do you see? It's just, it's it's easy. You, you can't freeze up when you... Mm -hmm. Never seen anybody get filled. And I've never seen anybody going, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. If they keep speaking in the in the language they've learned, then uh, we're just wasting time. Might as well just go on to the next person. All right. It's easy. Say it's easy. It's easy. Say, well, I'm not good enough. If you know Jesus as your Lord, he made you good enough. He made you right. Say, God doesn't make junk. He made me worthy made me by, his blood, by his blood to get filled with the same Holy Ghost that they got filled with on the day of Pentecost. All right. You'll say, well, what kind of miracle work and power is this that I'm going to get, that I'm going to be able to witness to my, my home city, witness to the surrounding area, witness to prostitutes, the half-breeds, the despised, and then to the other parts of the earth. What else can I expect? All right, Matt, you didn't forget about Mark 5, 19. Let's start reading. Mark 5, starting with verse 19, and we'll just start reading. And whatever God says stop, we'll stop. Verse 19, however, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, now who was he talking about? Because Jesus went into an area and this, this madman of the Gadarenes that was so bound by demon power that he didn't wear a stitch of clothes. You mean nothing? Nothing. Well, well did, they put, did they put him in jail? Couldn't. Well, what about the Roman soldiers? Roman soldiers had no power over him. Just think about it. Brutal Roman soldiers had no power over this man because every time they put chains, because when they go put somebody in a, a dungeon, they chain them. And every time they put chains around this man, he snapped the chains by demon power. So guess what? You don't see any Roman soldiers around him. They were scared. I've never heard anybody bring this out, but God brought this out to me about this, this, this particular story. Who was the, who was the Roman who was the Roman Empire? I mean, what was the what was it? What who was ruling the earth in that day? Romans. They were in charge of the world. Under C one Caesar, Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, Flavius, Nero, eventually on one Caesar after another, Rome ruled the earth. Jesus' ministry was under the Roman rule. Pilate was a governor that answered to Rome, to the Roman rule, when Jesus was crucified. And just think about it. There was no soldier, nobody on the planet could put enough chains around this one demon-possessed man. He snapped the chains. You know that's not normal power. It is not normal power for a human to snap heavy chains. It said no chain could bind him. But what was operating in Jesus when he came to that region, to the Coppolis, Everybody say miracle work in power. Yes. Say it again. Dunamis. Yes. Miracle work in power. power. And that, that man was naked. And he came to the church service. You want, you want to know your level of spirituality? How you would respond if somebody bound by demons without a stitch of clothes would come into this service right now. If, if you say, call the law, call the law, <laughs> you, 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 you're, 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 you're full of, uh, I don't know what you're full of, but not God. Mm -hmm. 
Don't let that person come in here. Did Jesus say, get away from me, you naked man? God's want me to make this story real today. I've never preached it like this because I've never had this kind of revelation. I've heard it preached through the years. I've never heard anybody bring this out because God's bringing it out directly from God, not through any human. No human did this come from. Yeah, a naked man came, you, you mean the church service, because wherever Jesus was, church was going on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so the naked man, where, where was he living? He was living in the graveyard, the cemetery. He lived there. There are people that people say that they're Christians. Hey, that's between you and God. I don't know because God, everybody say God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Do you know that there was a group in uh, Lavaca County that would drive, we used to live in Shiner, Texas years ago. There was a group when they passed by on the road when they passed by the cemetery, every time, there was a lot of people, every time they passed by a cemetery, they closed their mouth and hurried up past it so they wouldn't get a demon. Closing your mouth has nothing to do, those demons come right through you if you have an open door. And it'll have nothing to do with your mouth. Goofy. Goofiness. And most of the people are on the way to hell. And you know why? Because they heard some fable or some story about demons in that graveyard. This man lived in the graveyard. No chains could bind him, snapped every chain. No Roman soldiers wanted to get near him. This is the only man that I know of during the Roman Empire that they were afraid of because it says no chains. So who had the chains? Who was in charge? Rome. What soldiers bound people with chains? Romans. Everybody say Romans. Romans. No chains could bind him. But the moment Jesus came, that man without a stitch of clothes came and he kneeled. I'm talking about dunamis power that you get. He kneeled. He kneeled at Jesus' feet. Did they say, okay, disciples, go get some clothes on this man? We don't want the ministry team to see this. This don't look good on TV. I can tell you, Jesus wouldn't be allowed on most Christian so-called, I don't know what they are, TV cut and paste programs. The gospel is messy. If somebody like that comes into your, and God's wanting you to free them, free them right where they're at. He asked them, what is your name? And they said, our name is Legion, for we are many. And when Jesus cast them out, just think about this. One human had at least 2,000 demons. How do we know at least? Because, now listen to me very closely. Demons do not like leaving an area. So just think about this. These demons, this man is bowing. 
naked, tormented, day and night, lives in the graveyard. No chains could bind him, no Roman soldier near. Chains fell. They couldn't get him in a, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't contain him. The demon power. You hear stories of people with demon power that actually can throw automobiles. A regular automobile, throw it. That's not human power, that's demon power. There's no muscle building that, that, that can cause one human to throw an automobile with the motor and everything in it. Transmission and everything intact. Now, these demons begged Jesus. Listen to this. They said, let us go into those hogs. Those demons didn't want to leave that area. And they saw 2,000 hogs were being herded by a herdsman. And Jesus, listen, demons prefer, listen very closely. This is all by the Holy Ghost. Demons prefer to live in a human. But if they can't live in a human, they'll go into an animal. And so, rather than leave the area, they begged Jesus, let us go into those hogs. And Jesus said, go! And immediately when he said, go, 2,000 hogs became demon-possessed. 2,000 hogs, and every one of them, those hogs had more sense than a lot of people. They said, we'd rather die than to have these things in us. They said, let's run off the cliff. We can't take it. There are humans that love their demons. They pet their demons. You can have your demons if you want them, but they'll destroy you. Yes. Say, I don't want them. I don't want, I don't want any part of demons. Part of and guess what? That man became whole. Yes. Guess what? They didn't have to tell him to get clothes on. They didn't have to say, oh, now that you're free, you need to go get some clothes on. No, he went and got clothes. And he worshiped Jesus. And guess what? You, well, how did we get off on this? Because this is verse 19. We're fixing the clothes. Dunamis power will cause you to be able to set people free from demons. Yes. Say, I'm not, I'm not supposed to run from demons. They're supposed to run from me. In Jesus' name. That man got clothes on. And guess what? The, 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 the people that they had their business was taking care of those hogs. They lost their business. Because their whole business became demon possessed. <laughs> there, some businesses need to become demon possessed because they're ungodly businesses. Every one of those hogs ran off the cliff. They said, we're going we're gonna to kill ourselves. We can't take these demons anymore. And that man was free. The herdsmen ran into the town and told him, look at what happened. This man Jesus came, and that guy that no chains could bind him, that man that, that they, they couldn't bind him with no chains, he didn't have a stitch of clothes, he lived in the graveyard, he, he looks normal now, and he's got clothes on. Oh, and the town came out to say, oh, Jesus, we need you. No, they said, oh, Jesus, leave this area. We'd rather have that man full of demons 
and have those hogs back because we lost our money now. Their God was money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil and they would rather have the income from those 2,000 hogs than to get a man set free from demon power. I want to tell you, there's no difference today in many places, in the, especially in the United States of America, where people who go to church, their God is their pocketbook. And so, this man, this brings us up to verse 19. I just told you what all happened. What the Holy Ghost told you. Because I didn't even know all that. Verse 19. Uh, he wanted to come with him. Well, well look at this. Back up to, to 17. And then they began to plead with him uh, uh, to depart from their region. Pleading with who? Jesus! The only one that can rescue them from hell. And they're saying, leave us. We don't want you, Jesus. Just think about that. We don't want you. That's serious to tell Jesus we don't want you. Because guess what? Satan is will willingly accept you. We don't want you. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. Verse 18, and when he got into the boat, he who, who had been, everybody say had been, possessed, begged him that he might be with him. In other words, he was saying, man, I, I want to be with you. I don't want to be with all these people that don't want you, Jesus. And guess what? Verse 19, guess what Jesus did? Jesus released this, this minister. Not only is he... Not only is he saved now, God has anointed him, glory to God, giving his testimony. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends. In other words, in other words, I'm leaving, but you're staying. Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Guess what? Revival came to that whole region because of that one man got free. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's bow our heads right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise for you. Oh, Debbie Schultz is her wrist is in pain right now. Looking at Facebook by life, swollen and in a brace. Stretch your hands out right now. In the name of Jesus, I ask for a creative miracle in Debbie's wrist right now. In the name of Jesus, bones, everything become normal. Swelling go down. You are her healer, her mender, her repairer right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray you are supernaturally healing our son, Justin. And Lord, speeding up this healing process so quick that it will astound the medical profession. They'll never, they, they, they'll have to realize, Jesus, you did it. Oh, we give you praise. And if there's anybody else that's, that's dealing with demon power right now, or, or you need salvation, you need healing, call out to him right now. And receive the Holy Ghost. Those that you need to receive, speak out right now. Don't speak in your language you learn. Speak out in other tongues right now. Be free right now in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise.